In America, people assume that freedom is their birthright. This freedom has been bought with the blood of our service men and women who have died in the line of duty. Many Americans are unaware of the 24 overseas American military cemeteries where over 124,000 soldiers lay at rest. This film is about the last group of soldiers to be permanently interred in the foreign lands where they fought and died to keep our freedom. World War II marked the end of service personnel being buried in overseas cemeteries. Since the Korean War, all soldiers killed in action have been returned to U.S. soil. There are many from various conflicts who are still listed as missing in action. Although this film does not cover that subject, our hearts go out to their loved ones who still grieve today. There are over 93,000 World War II soldiers buried in our overseas cemeteries which are beautifully maintained by the American Battle Monument Commission. These soldiers are the last generation that never came home. In order for you to gain a true sense of their sacrifice and their surroundings that are so far away, I will take you through one soldier's experience at the cemetery where he is buried. That soldier is my cousin, PFC Harold B. McCarn, who is buried at the Henri Chapelle American Military Cemetery in Belgium. He is one of the over 93,000 members of the last generation that never came home. His experience and the experience of his family are emblematic of all those who lie permanently at rest overseas. PFC McCarn was a 22-year-old infantryman assigned to the 60th Armored Infantry Battalion, 9th Armored Division. His division had just secured the only bridge over the Rhine River at Remagen, Germany, just nine days earlier. His unit was tasked with securing the Autobahn just east of Remagen. He was killed during the attack on March the 16th, 1945, just 53 days short of the German surrender. That is where the story begins. PFC Harold B. McCarn lay dead on the ground next to the Autobahn. But how did he get from that horrible battlefield in Germany to the beautiful American military cemetery that you've seen? That was the work of the Graves Registration Units. They picked up the bodies from the battlefield and transported them back to the various temporary cemeteries in Europe. In Harold's case, he was taken from the battlefield, placed on a stretcher, and then taken back in the direction of a collection point near the battalion aid station. The men responsible for retrieving Harold's body would face an unexpected catastrophe the next day. On March the 17th, 1945, the collection unit approached the Rhine River with Harold's body, only to find chaos at the Ludendorff Railway Bridge, which had collapsed that day. The Graves Registration Unit would have to wait their turn to cross the Rhine River on either the pontoon bridge that was still standing, or the ferry service that had been established. From that point, they would stack the bodies in the back of a deuce and a half truck in order to transport them the considerable distance back to the temporary American military cemetery at Henri Chapelle, Belgium. Harold was one of the final men to be buried in the temporary American military cemetery at Henri Chapelle, Belgium. The cemetery was closed just a few days later on March the 31st, 1945. The distance from the front lines back to the cemetery had become so great that it was impractical to take the bodies all the way back from the front lines to Belgium. By the end of March 1945 and continuing through May 1945, the American Army opened a number of temporary military cemeteries throughout Germany to bury those killed 
during the final days of World War II. After the 1945 Memorial Day programs were completed, General Eisenhower issued the order that every single grave at the temporary cemeteries in Germany would be immediately disinterred and the remains of those soldiers sent immediately back to the temporary American military cemeteries that were not located in Germany. The Henri Chapelle Temporary American military cemetery looked nothing like the cemetery does today. The temporary cemetery was just a farm field that had been selected by the Graves Registration Unit in September 1944. Graves were continuously dug from mid-September 1944 to the end of March 1945. The dead soldiers would arrive in the uniforms that they were wearing at the time of death. Soldiers who died at the aid station were often collected with little or no clothing on their bodies. The graves registration personnel would carefully collect all personal items from each body and inventory them. Then the soldiers' personal belongings would be placed into a small drab olive bag that would be sent back to the United States to eventually be forwarded to the next of kin. The bodies were placed into a white mattress cover. Then they were lowered into their temporary graves and then covered with dirt as a chaplain, when one was available, said a short prayer. A painted wooden cross with each soldier's name and serial number was placed on the grave. The temporary cemetery at Henri Chapelle was large. Cemetery number one held 17,000 332 Americans and 191 Allied soldiers. To the south was located a cemetery with 10,030 Germans. After the war ended, the U.S. military extended an offer with four choices to each soldier's immediate next of kin. The family could choose from one of the following. First, have the remains buried in a permanent American overseas military cemetery, none of which had yet been constructed. Number two, have the remains returned to the United States for burial in a private cemetery. Number three, have the remains returned to the family's home country for burial in a private cemetery. Or number four, have the remains returned to the United States for burial in a national cemetery. This was an extremely painful experience for each and every family member, making the choice of bringing a son home or leaving him with his comrades in arm was agonizing. The simple aspect of writing and completing the form was a gut-wrenching reminder of each family's loss. The whole repatriation process and the construction of the permanent American military cemetery took 13 years. On July the 27th, 1947, the repatriation program began. To begin the process, the Henri Chapelle Temporary Cemetery was closed. All the German soldiers buried at the Henri Chapelle Temporary American Cemetery No. 2 had to be disinterred and their remains located to a new cemetery located in Lomel, Belgium. Next, all the American soldiers had to be disinterred and the identity of their remains carefully reconfirmed prior to being placed in a temporary wooden coffin. Then, all the remains were placed in aluminum caskets which were sealed in a wooden container. The wooden containers were placed above the ground in two separate groups, those being sent home and those awaiting permanent burial. This process took place at all temporary cemeteries, but Henri Chapelle was unique because it was one of the temporary cemeteries selected for conversion into a permanent military cemetery. The first group of soldiers scheduled to be repatriated to the United States 
were placed on a barge and taken up the Maas River to Antwerp, Belgium. At Antwerp, the ship Joseph V. Conley was loaded with the remains of 5,600 fallen American soldiers. Over 30,000 Belgian people turned out in October 1947 to honor those who'd given their lives to free Europe from Nazi oppression. The ship arrived in Brooklyn, New York on October 26, 1947, while a large crowd viewed the solemn occasion. The caskets were unloaded and sent by train to each soldier's final destination. For the families of the last generation soldiers, the process must have seemed extremely long as they awaited news of the permanent burial location. The sheer magnitude and size of the task implied that the duration would be lengthy. PFC Harold B. McCarn's timetable would be typical for all those awaiting permanent burial at Henri Chapelle. His timetable was as follows. He was killed in action in Germany March 16, 1945. He was buried at the Temporary Cemetery on March 20, 1945. He was disinterred from the Temporary Cemetery on November 7, 1947. He was placed in a casket on November 24, 1947. He was finally buried in his permanent location on April 1, 1949, and his family was notified of the burial and its location on June 14, 1949. For Harold's family, the four-year, three-month process was wrought with great anguish. Harold's wife received the four-question notice from the Army. On April 1, 1947, she relinquished her right to make the decision and turned it over to Harold's father, Bernice McCarn. It took two agonizing years for the family to make their final decision. On March 23, 1949, Bernice McCarn wired the Army with his final decision to have his son, Harold, permanently interred overseas. Once all the soldiers were reburied, In the new location, there was a beautification program which gave the cemetery a nice appearance compared to the temporary cemetery during World War II. The graves were still marked with painted wooden crosses and there were no monuments. On May 14, 1947, Executive Order 10057 transferred control of the military cemeteries to the American Battle Monuments Commission. Work continued at Henri Chapelle throughout the 1950s. The process ended when the present-day Henri Chapelle American Military Cemetery and Memorial was dedicated on July the 9th, 1960. The pictures of the temporary cemetery remind us of the gruesomeness and ugliness of war. There's nothing glorious about being covered in dirt and being buried in a foreign country. The fallen soldiers were treated with proper respect, and I am forever grateful to the men of the 607th Graves Registration Company and their successors that served at Henri Chapelle. They had the horrible assignment of retrieving, cataloging, and burying our fallen loved ones, thanks to the men who served in the Graves Registration Units during World War II.